This is a story of one man's dream to rule Antwerp. Standard Trellard and I are excited to share the story of King Kenny to the next generation of football players and fans. Grab a cup of tea and a moment's peace while I tell you a story about Kenny Dalglish. Born in Scotland in 51, his journey to greatness had barely begun. His passion for football started in net, but he hadn't realized his true talent yet. He took off his gloves and moved up the field. From that moment on, his future was sealed. With his dad by his side and the ball at his feet, they played in the garden and outside on the street. Bill was his hero, his mentor, his guide. He'd watch over Kenny, his eyes filled with pride. At Ibrox Stadium, no matter the weather, they supported Rangers and watched them together. They talked about tactics and winning the league, and this filled his mind with hope and intrigue. He trained with his friends outside on the rack. His father once said, keep the ball on the deck. You've got to remember, you're not very tall. Keep the play on the ground and your eye on the ball. He worked really hard. He played every day. His father watching games both home and away. His father said, Kenny, you've got a real skill. I'll always support you. I promise I will. When I see you playing, it makes me so proud. And you'll see me smiling up there in the crowd. Kenny felt happy. He felt safe and glad. Family mattered to him and his dad. As Kenny grew older, he dreamed of one thing, professional football, midfield or the wing. He tried for the Reds who were eager to sign, but being so young, he had to decline. He sat in his bedroom and spoke to his dad, who was proud of his son and was feeling quite glad. His father said, Kenny, now listen to me. Everything happens for a reason, you see. Sean Fallon from Celtic said he'd like to meet. He says you're a genius with the ball at your feet. Now get your boots, shin pads and ball and pull down those posters from your bedroom wall. Soon after that, Kenny was signed, but he still had a dream in the back of his mind to wear the Reds jersey to hear the crowd sing. But for now it was Celtic and the trophies he'd bring. Scotland was calling his train at the station. It was time for Douglish to play for his nation. He played against Belgium in 71. His debut performance was second to none. A shining example, the best of the best. His skills as a player were put to the test. He played against Holland, Denmark and Spain, scoring goals from all angles, 30 to his name. With a heart full of passion and arms open wide, he discovered true love and a beautiful bride. Her name was Marina. She was humble and sweet. Four children later, their clan was complete. Over a hundred goals later, scoring game after game, the Reds made an offer of glory and fame. He turned to his father, who gave him advice. He said, Kenny, that offer may well seem real nice. It's not about glory for you, them or me. It's all about honor and your legacy. In a game against Middlesbrough, out there on the lawn, within seven minutes, King Kenny was born. They say time flies when you're having fun. Over a hundred goals scored, cups and trophies he'd won. The fans sang his name with each kick of the ball. His poster displayed on every kid's wall. Enfield was home now, he lost every game, but he didn't care about money or fame. Center or striker, midfield or wing. When he wore number seven, he could do anything. Back on the mercy, the games carried on. Winning or losing, his passion grew strong. Trophies or medals, awards galore. Who would have thought that he could do more? When the footballers voted their play of the year, he had the most votes. No one even came near. 
he'd now become famous for playing this game to live forever in the Hall of Fame. Then one morning in 84, a mystery letter appeared at his door. His eyes grew wide the moment he'd seen the letter was written to him from the Queen. Kenneth Douglish, your majesty here, pop down to my palace at the end of the year. Your hero, a leader, a national treasure, to honor your work would be my pleasure. Kenny was thrilled, jumping high in the air. He bought trousers and shoes and new underwear. When he met with Her Highness and the monarchy, she named him King Kenny, M-B-E. Acknowledging Kenny as a natural mentor, they asked him to manage at age 34 to lead all the players through thick and through thin. With Kenny in charge, surely they'd win. In the FA Cup final, he turned to his team and said, Listen here, boys, we all have a dream. My father once said, life is your legacy, so let's play this game and create it, you'll see. It's not about money, it's not about fame. It's all about how we each play the game. Be humble, be kind, push yourself to the limit and don't stop playing till the final minute. After 22 years climbing higher and higher, he hung up his boots. It was time to retire. Over 500 games, more than 200 goals, his legacy grew. There was more to unfold. From this day forward, he'd no longer play, but he'd lead this team day after day. He'd teach them the lessons, he'd show them the skills, he'd turn up to training and make them run drills. He saw his team as a band of brothers, but most of all, he cared about others. With his wife Marina, he started a fund raising millions for cancer, the people were stunned. Now he's a leader, he's a guide. He's the man who is swollen with pride. After reading his story, I think you'll agree, King Kenny created a true legacy. That's the story of King Kenny. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the book. Stay safe and take care of each other.